So here we are with my next top 10 on my soccer universe and I'm very excited uh, doing this uh, now because I prepared for this one a special presentation so you won't see me personally in this one but I think it is more interesting uh, this way because there are many facts that are on there and for me it's easier than to um, have those slides ready for you that you can read them. I'm also recording this on my phone since my laptop is very busy doing some calculations for work so um, it is not very good to uh, disturb those and make the computer even slower. I've been doing this for a while and that's why the last few videos are all recorded from the phone, posted from the phone and it's not the usual quality. And lastly, I, I want to say I went through this presentation on the phone and I've seen that while you can get all the information, it might be better to watch this one on a bigger screen. So, uh, what is this top 10 about? Well, we're looking at the top 10 World Cup goal scorers, and we'll start off with the methodology uh, how I came up with this. Um, you can see here already four World Cup goal scorers. That are candidates. We have on the top left Just Fontaine, we have below him Battigol, Gabriel Battistuta, one of my favorite jerseys of all time, then Garincha, of course, won a golden boot in 62 with a few others, and then Klinsmann, also a great goal scorer. Um, so, um, this is not my really my personal top 10, although my personal would be very close to what I came out with, but I looked at some. Uh, numbers, crunched some numbers and computed a final goal value which I call the adjusted, adjusted goal value and in particular I looked at every goal scored in the World Cup and judged it according to the following aspects and I'm just giving you the um, rough rundown on this. The first one is what is the goal value compared to 2018? Um, this is kind of an inflation value a goal nowadays, since less goals are scored, are more worth more than a goal, let's say in the 50s, especially 54, with I think there were more four go more than four goals per game average or five goals even. So uh, goals there were at a premium. Um, also, I think even in the 70s there were more goals scored than now. The most precious goals in that regard were the ones at the 1990 World Cup. So I'm sorry, Schuist von Den, you were at a World Cup where many goals were scored. So your 13 goals, if you adjust it, are only worth just 9.6 and that will not actually make the cut a lot among other things. The next thing is I only want to have important goals count. So I have a computer importance factor meaning that a goal that puts a team in the lead or equalizes uh, the game that counts fully. I give half points for a goal that puts a team up by two goals because I think this uh, is kind of pre-deciding uh, a game so this could be a vital lead so this should also count a little bit. The same thing if uh, a team is 2-0 behind and you score a goal to 1-2 to just get them back into the game I also count this half. Everything else I don't count in the importance factor and we see a Gabriel Batistuta he scored a lot of goals that were not worth a lot. I'm thinking Greece in 94, three goals where he scored the game winner, but the other two were running up the score. Similar against Jamaica in 98, where he scored three goals when it was already 2-0. All of those goals don't count. So, sorry about the goal, you're one of my favorite players, but you won't rank highly here. Another important goal is, I already mentioned it, is the game winners. Uh, a game-winning goal is, is the goal that the opposition could not match. So if a team is up 3-0 and then manages to win 3-2, the third goal is the winning goal. If it has only one goal scored, of course, that's the winning goal. But, um, so the game-winning goal is kind of the one goal that put the game beyond the opponent. Uh, in a 5-2 win, it's the third goal scored by the winning team. It's as simple as that. And Garincha may have been a great player, but he was not good at game winners. And even winning in this golden boot, I think he had only one game winner. I'm sorry for that. 
And the last one, where I judge, is the stage where the goal is scored. And to me, a goal in a final counts a lot more than a goal uh, scored in a group stage. And this is now not that easy to uh, balance out of all the tournaments, but I think I found a nice way. And I'll provide links in the description below where you can read uh, more details about how I factor everything in here. Um, in the end, I came to the conclusion that not only do goals in a knockout game or a do or die game um, count more, uh, but also that a goal in the final, scored in the final, should be worth twice as much as a goal scored in a group stage when we have 24 or 30, uh, 20, uh, 32 game, uh, teams. Sorry about that. And that also means Klinsmann. You've scored many goals, but you have never scored a goal beyond the second round. And therefore, Klinsmann will also not feature in this top 10. So we have already four players eliminated that I can say right off the bat. And while we're at it, eliminating players uh, since we're in 2018, there won't be the preeminent players of the last decade uh, because they're not great at the World Cup. This means no Messi and no Ronaldo. Uh, on the World Cup stage, those players are also ran when it comes to goal scoring, um, which is kind of staggering if you think about it, but both have not exactly set a tournament uh, alight, especially when in the latter stages, and I only refer now to goal scoring, Messi probably provided some spark for Argentina to make it to the final 2014. Ronaldo has a lot to do, so it's not that I'm saying they're bad players, but in terms of goal scoring, they're not featuring in this top 10. Well, that was a long pre, uh, pre discussion. Let's get started. At number 10, one of the greatest players of all time, Pele. Uh, and I have to say, every list that includes Pele, there's a certain, certain validity to it. Let's look at the raw stats before we break it down in the more advanced categories. Uh, Pelé played 14 World Cup, Cup games, he scored 12 goals and he won two World Cups and was also in the squad for a third World Cup in 62 but he was injured in the second game, did not participate in the final. That's why I count on the two World Cups but sometimes he's referred to as a three-time World Cup winner, um, hence the asterisk there. 12 goals in 14 games is a pretty good haul. Let's look at it a little bit closer. Uh, in the advanced touch stats. His goal value, meaning uh, adjusted kind of this inflation adjustment, is 10. So the 12 goals um, only count for 10 goals in 2018. And these are rounded val uh, values to one digit. Uh, we can go more. Importance factor, 7. So of the 12 goals that, 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 that I scored, only a count of seven, it was really important, meaning they didn't come in a route. And this was a problem for Pelé because, you know, when they beat France in the semifinals in 58, 5-2, he scored three goals. Some of those were not exactly uh, important. He scored the game winner in the World Cup final that year, but he also put one, I think, for 4-2, uh, which only counted half. So, you know, there are games where Pelé did not, where Pelé's goals were not as important. Uh, to the outcome of the game itself. Uh, but he was very good in game winners. I mean, six game winners, that's a pretty darn good uh, value. Another uh, great value is seven goals when it counted. In 58, he scored all his goals, and I think there were six of those. He scored them from the quarterfinal on. So this is a sign of a, a great performing player. And lastly... He has three goals in the World Cup final. One in 1970, the famous header, and two in 58, where the first goal is probably one of the best goals ever scored in the World Cup final. And summarizing his 12 goals, if I put all this together in the algorithm, I describe it in my blog, I get to it an adjusted goals of 11.112. It's actually slightly less than that, but I'm counting to three digits. Number nine, Gary Lineker, 
also a great player and you can already see he's probably slightly ahead of Pelé because he is a more recent player and he scored many goals in the 1990 World Cup and I told you goals in the 1990 World Cup count a lot. Let's see his stats. He played 12 World Cup games, also quite good, and he scored 10 goals. That's a pretty good uh, goal scoring tally. Um, and he won the Golden Boot in 1986. So right off the bat we have a very uh, we have again uh, good raw stats, but let's break it down a little bit more in the advanced category. Uh, his goal value is 11.1. This is higher than Pelé because he was scoring in a period where goals were a little bit more at a premium. Uh, the importance factor is 7. I think Pelé had the same. Uh, he had only 3 game winners. This was the stuff that um, kind of surprised me, but um, if you think about it, go through all of Lineker's goals. Uh, yes, he had the 3 against Paraguay, he had, I think, 2 against Cameroon. Uh, they were game winners, but then he also had, to, you know, this uh, goal against Argentina when, uh, in the quarterfinals, where Argentina was already 2 0 ahead, and uh, Lineker has a knack for having those kind of goals. They are still important, but they're not necessarily game winners. He has six goals in the knockout stage. That's actually a pretty good value. And, of course, he has no goals in the uh, World Cup final because England hasn't made it to a World Cup final since 1966. However, his overall adjusted goals tally is here the same as Pelé. It's slightly above Pelé and this is mainly due to that he, uh, his goals were kind of valued a little bit more. But uh, Gerlineke and Pelé in terms of goal scoring, and we are talking only about goal scoring here, nothing about their play, their contribution to the game and so on, their pure goal scoring ability, Gerlineke is slightly ahead of Pelé. Number 8, Vava. Um, yes, there should be an accent on the R, and the same thing was uh, for Pelé. Another one of the great 58 uh, class, and Vava is, has the distinction of being the first player to score a goal in a final consecutively, in two consecutive finals. I think no one else has achieved that so far. And there are only, four, uh, I think, three more players that have scored in two finals. I want to say Paul Breitner was one, uh, Zinedine Zidane was one, and um, Pelé was one, of course, Pelé. Forgetting the big boy. Raw stats. Vava it might not be the most well-known player, but um, when I grew up and I read about the Brazilians, he was one vital component of these 58 and 62 teams. Those are probably some of the greatest teams that ever played at the World Cup, if you just look at the stats and how they dominated proceedings. Those were, the 62 team was also the last team to defend successfully the World Cup title. He played 10 games uh, at the World Cup. He had only, I think, uh, 15 games total, a very small number total for Brazil. And in those uh, 10 games he scored 9 goals, so basically almost a, a goal per game. He won two World Cups in 58 and 62, and he also shared the Golden Boot uh, in 62 with uh, three other players. I think the boot was eventually given to Garincha by a draw, uh, draw of lo drawing of lots, but Vava is among those. Let's break down his advanced stats. Um, of course, the goal value is where he's hurting. Nine goals that are worth 7.6 goals, uh, because he was in a period where um, goals were way more frequent. However, his importance factor is absolutely great. He's also seven, but on nine goals, meaning that only two goals of his can be deemed as unimportant. That's extraordinary. Game winners, three. Not that great, but, you know, I think there's a game win and one World Cup final in there, which counts, of course. He has seven knockout goals, so almost all of his goals came in a knockout stage when it counted. Also a great sign of a um, 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 prolific striker and he has three goals in the finals. That's only matched uh, by Pelé on this list. We have Jeff Hurst and that's pretty much it. Those are the only uh, players that have three goals in a World Cup final. Of course Pelé and Vava have it over too. And so his combined tally is 11.296 adjusted goals. Uh, so he is beating out the previous two. Now, let's go to number seven, Miroslav Klose. In a way, 
he is the reason why I'm compiling this list. Yes, he is leading the overall tally of goal scoring. However, when we look at the raw stats, he has 24 games and 16 goals. He has a lot more goals than all the others. Uh, two out of three goal ratio is a great goal ratio, don't get me wrong, but I never thought that Klose is the best score, goal scorer in the World Cup of all time. He, even he would admit that. <laughs> But I also got to give it to him. In his latter years, he actually did a lot to adjust for his greatness. He scored a goal in the semi-final in 2014. He scored a quarter-final goal, but this was when he already had established a significant goal tally. I still would say that um, I always had the feeling that most of Klose's goals, especially the early ones, came against inferior opponents and usually in a group stage. As we will see, this is what's hurting Klose here a little bit, despite him having the most goal scored of anyone on this list, 16. Um, he has won, of course, one World Cup in 2014, and he has won one Golden Boot in 2006. So his stats are impeccable. I gotta give it to him. He is, maybe because he's such a um, humble player, that's why uh, he doesn't strike you as this overall great player. That undoubtedly he is. He's the anti-Ronaldo, anti-Messi. Uh, at the World Cup stage, he shines on the club stage. He never did as much. Let's look at the advanced stats. His uh, goal value is, of course, pretty high with 17.8. Because, you know, he is a recent goal scorer. So all his goals count actually a lot more and... Given that goal scoring in 2014-18 was up and he scored many goals in 2006, uh, where it was almost the second lowest in 2010, uh, that should tell you that, yes, he was a great goal scorer in a time when goals were really at a premium. The importance factor, that's where it's hurting a little bit. 10.5 is not that great of a value, uh, given that he has scored 16 game winners, only 4. That is, to me, uh, one of the most telling statistics. But there is a game winner in a semi-final. He scored the second goal against Brazil, and if Brazil, they won 7-1, he scored the second goal. So that's a game winner for Klose, his last World Cup goal. He also has only five goals in the knockout stage. Um, so this is kind of 11 goals came in the group stage. Uh, yes, it's important to score in the group stage, but it's more important to score in the latter stages. So this is also a little bit against him. And of course he has no goal in a World Cup final, but of course uh, he played only one and that was a 1-0 after overtime. Still, with 16 goals, you're bound to be high on, high on this list and I wouldn't have felt right to have him outside of my top 10. And uh, my uh, adjusted goals value for closer is 11 point. Four, eight, six. Let's move on. Number six, Salvatore Toto Scilacci. Now this might be a surprise to many, because he played at only one World Cup. But at this World Cup, I defy you to tell me anyone else. He had the greatest goal-scoring World Cup of all time. Let's look at the stats. He played in seven games and. At least the first, if not already the second, the first two he came on as a substitute. And he scored straight off the winner against Austria in that first game. In those seven games he scored six goals. Coming on initially as a substitute, only making the first squad in the third of his games. He won the Golden Boot in Italy and was the big hero. We see him here scoring uh, the go-ahead goal in the semi-final against Argentina, of course. Uh, they didn't win that semi-final, so it's kind of a little bit anticlimactic to put him in. Let's look at his raw stats. If I would compute not a tally for each goal, but an average, Scilacci wins by a mile. That's how great his World Cup was in 1990. Goal value 7.2. 1990 has the lowest goal scoring average, so therefore his goals count even more. Helps him for sure. Importance factor, 6.0. Every single goal that he scored was important. Every single goal that he scored was an important goal. 
There was no running up the score whatsoever. He provided the breakthrough. Game winners. Five. Five out of his six goals are game winners. I think the only one that was not a game winner was the first goal that he scored in the third place playoff. Oh no. Correct. Uh, I'm wrong here. The only game winner that he did not score was exactly the goal that he's uh, scoring here in the semifinal. Everything else was a game winner. Just unbelievable. Knockout goals. Four. Yes, he scored two in the group stage, but of course they were important. And then the last one, he didn't reach the final. He had one goal in the third place playoff. Skilacci's World Cup is unbelievable. In just a single World Cup, he gets an adjusted goals 12.009. He more than doubles his goal tally in adjusted goals. One of the greatest World Cup performances that you will ever see. He was never that great before, he was never that great after. That's the one. He's a, he's, he's a one-hit wonder, if you want to believe. But Skilacci, on that World Cup, I defy you to find anyone having a greater World Cup than Skilacci. Bar none. Number five, the next Italian, Roberto Baggio. Now, this one we can believe a little bit more. Roberto Baggio is probably the last player that took a team on his shoulders into a final. Not winning it, but into a final. And he became the tragic figure of that final by missing the penalty. Although, even if he would have made it, Brazil probably would have won the final. It's got to be said like that as well. Let's look at his raw stats. I mean, he has more games than Skilacci, of course. He is 16. He played in 1990. 94, he was the big man. And in 98, of course, uh, he was also in the squad and playing regularly. He scored nine goals in those six, uh, in this total 16 games, so not as great as Skilacci. But he reached one World Cup final. So that definitely counts for him. Let's look at the advanced stats. His goal value... Inflation is just in 9.3, so a little bit more than um, what he actually scored. Importance factor, 7.5. Really, really good value. I mean, he rarely made goals that didn't count. Um, game winners, 4. So uh, his goals, a little bit less than half of those goals, were uh, important goals, uh, in, uh, were winning goals. Um, it's not now reflected. He has uh, six goals in the knockout stage, so that's actually quite a lot. And I think at the 94 World Cup, all his goals that he scored there were in the knockout stage. And they were progressively. He scored in the round of 16, shown here against Nigeria. He scored in um, the quarterfinal, the game winner. He scored in the semifinal. So he really took the team on his back and this counts uh, highly in these uh, ratings. Of course, in the final, he was a little bit of shadow of himself, uh, slightly injured and therefore couldn't score back then. His adjusted goals is slightly higher than Scratch's 12.444. Roberto Baggio. Now at number four, we have another kind of forgotten player these days, Gregor Lato from Poland. Um, if you never heard of him, check him out. What he did in 74, where he won the Golden Boot, in 78 and in 82. His goal-scoring ability, as we will see, is amazing. He was one of the greatest Polish players. If you, like me, and grew up and your first World Cup was in 1990, and you kind of grew up in the 90s, Poland was a non-factor because they just lost the great generation from the, late, from the 70s and the early 80s, although this generation never made it to a Euro Finals tournament. Let's look at Lato's raw stats. 20 games, so he played a lot of games, because Poland was always in contention up until late in the tournament. They made it always to the second round and twice to the semifinals, making uh, one third place or two third places in 82 and also in 74. 10 goals, that's maybe not, not all that's impressive, but we'll see how good these goals were, and he won the golden boot. Uh, in 74, I think with 7 goals back then. He said one stat, goal value 10.3, so slightly better than uh, his actually scored 
importance factor 8.0 of 10 goals, 8 counted fully. Just think about that again. Absolute amazing stat. Game winners 7. He scored goals when it counted. Of 10 goals, 7 goals were game winners. Absolute amazing stat. Now knockout goals, that's a little bit uh, misleading. Um, he had only one knockout goal. Uh, because when he played in those three World Cups, there were hardly any knockout stages. Uh, so therefore his one knockout goal is the goal that secured third place for Poland in 74. Um, in When I uh, looked at the stage, I of course adjusted because he scored many goals in those second round stages, some of, of which were kind of semi, uh, quasi semi-finals or quarter-finals and so on. So um, I did adjust it, but this doesn't look good because it's a little bit misleading. The tournaments in 74, 78 and 82 didn't have a dedicated knockout stage. They were kind of odd years. So uh, that's doesn't count really against Lato because I took into account how many teams were left when he scored those goals. So, um, but this stat is maybe a little bit misleading. Of course, he never made it to a World Cup final, um, but his final value is 12.552. Lato, one of the greatest World Cup goal scorers. The only three that I rank above. Number three is Paolo Rossi. Of course, you could expect Rossi to be there. Um, he had also one really, really great run, but he's had, in addition, two more World Cups that he played in. He had a total of 14 games, 78, 82 and 86. Um, he scored nine goals in those. Six came in the uh, 1982 World Cup. And he won the World Cup in 1982 and he also won the Golden Boot. So these are staggering stats uh, for Rossi. It has to be said that all those six goals that he scores came in the last three of seven games in that World Cup. His most famous are the three against Brazil, that's shown here. Uh, then he scored two against Poland and the first goal in the final against Germany. And if Germany wouldn't have scored the late penalty, would have been a game winner and Rossi would have had even a higher value. Advanced stats, goal value 8.7, slightly less. Importance factor 8.59 goals, 8.5 importance, so he barely scored a goal that was not important. That is the sign of a great goal scorer. Three of those were game winners. Well, the final one, we can count the two in uh, 82, then he scored another game winner against Austria in 78. So um, it's because those six goals came in three games. He cannot get, uh, he couldn't get as many game winners, but all the go all the goals he scored in '82 were absolutely vital to Italy's success. Knockout goals four and a half. Again, a little bit misleading. I counted uh, the goals uh, in against Brazil. I counted as half because it was not necessarily a knockout game, but it was clear if Italy needs to win this game, otherwise they are out. So this was a half knockout game. Therefore, four and a half goals, and those are all the ones he scored in 82, are counted in those four and a half. And he has one goal in the World Cup final, which is usually the most precious one. And we get an adjusted goals value of 13.423. Paolo Rossi is your number three. Number two, Ronaldo. The original Ronaldo. I said no Messi, no Ronaldo. I meant Cristiano. I did not mean the original Ronaldo. I um, was a little bit surprised about it initially, but if you think about it, he deserves to be up there. Absolutely. One of the greatest pure goal scorers the world has ever seen. And it's a shame that his knee gave in and he couldn't stay fit all, all the time. Raw stats. He has a lot of games. 19 games. Uh, in he made it to two World Cup finals uh, as a squad player, so absolutely uh, many games and a great player, and usually the vital player on these teams. 15 goals in 19 games. Great ratio for the times that he was playing, 98, 
2002-2006. He was in the 94 squad, but he didn't play a single game. I really wanted him to play back then, but he never made it. He won one World Cup in 2002, uh, where he's shown here uh, scoring the goal against Germany, probably the most stupid haircut we've ever seen at a World Cup. He was, the asterisk is because he was in a squad in 94 where they won the World Cup, but he didn't contribute. So therefore, yes, there's a picture of him holding the World Cup. He's in the team photo. He did not make it into the, the first um, team squad at any game. So therefore the asterisk. And he won the Golden Boot and he was the last one to score more than six goals. Uh, in the World Cup tournament in 2002, he scored eight and these eight are the goals that actually make him deserve the spot uh, number two on my list. Let's look at the advanced stats. Goal value 16. He played at a time, goals were a premium, so that ups his goal value. Importance factor is maybe not as great, 9.5, but you know, out of 15 goals, you're bound to maybe net a few against opponents that are inferior, but still 9.5 9 is not that bad, I would say. Game winners, only four. That I was surprised, but you know, you had, had a game winner in a semi-final, you had a game winner in a final. Uh, those count heavily. He also had a goal in another semi-final in 98, so you know, when it counted, Ronaldo was there. And that's what uh, distinguishes him from Klose. He scored more in the latter stages as we have 8 knockout goals. That's a good tally. He did it at any time. Uh, more than 50% of his goals came in the knockout stage. That's the sign of a good goal scorer. And 2 goals in the final. The 2 only goals in the 2002 final. Um, yes, he absolutely deserves to be there. The kit is the worst World Cup winning kit, in my opinion. The haircut also. Ronaldo is one of is probably the greatest pure goal scorer I've seen in my lifetime. Um, and for that reason, he belongs in number two. His adjusted goal tally is 14.322. Absolutely amazing, great player. And that leads us to number one. And if you think about the, I can be only one player. It's Gerd Müller. Uh, even if I would have made the lists by my personal feeling, I've never seen Gerd Müller play, but if you look at the pure stats, he is amazing. 13 games, 14 goals. We could stop right there. Of anyone who has played more than 10 games in the World Cup, he's the only one who has more goals than games. That already tells you everything. He is one of the purest goal scorers or the purest goal scorer you've ever seen. In fact, in Germany, I still discuss was he a good football player or did he just get lucky? He won one World Cup in 74. We see him here. And also, this is a World Cup won in his home country, in his hometown, in his home stadium. This is a really, really a special fact. And he won one golden boot four years earlier in Mexico, scoring 10 goals. It's actually uh, so surprising that he only scored four goals in 74. But two of those four goals came in the quasi semifinal against Poland and the World Cup winning goal against the Netherlands. So when it counted, he was there. Let's look at the advanced stats. Goal value 13.2, little bit less. Importance factor 9.5. Yes, in 70, 70, some of the early goals were a little bit running up the scores, but the importance factor uh, 9.5 is still uh, absolute top value. Game winners 6. Not Skilachi like uh, when you see it, but overall 6 game winners, and of course, as I said, a game winner in a World Cup final, a game winner in a quasi semi final. Uh, doesn't really get better than that. Um, knockout goals, again, a little bit misleading. He has five those um, because um, we had the group stage in 74. I actually counted the goal against Poland uh, as a knockout goal because this was 
a quasi semi final, and of course, he had uh, knockout goals um, in 1970, plenty of those. And <laughs> his last goal was the one that gave them the World Cup. His overall tally 15.764. He towers above them all. Not only did he score many goals, he gets this high value despite being at a time where goals were already uh, were um, a little bit less valuable than they are today. And if you look up Gerd Müller, I don't think you can find any better goal scoring player in any time, in any period. An absolute phenomenon and worthy to be the number one in my list. Well, as I said, I wrote a series of blogs earlier this year. I think it's six posts total. I link all of them in the description. If you want to read through those, I go through them from a start with the uh, just pure goal tally that uh, everyone is talk, talking about. And then slowly, slowly, slowly adjust. It's a little bit like how many factors do we have to concede until closer drops out of the top three. Uh, that was not my goal, but as I said... I always was bothered that Klose is now the top goal scorer. I think both Gerd Müller and Ronaldo, and I even had a problem when Ronaldo took over Gerd Müller. Those are way better scorers, and I think the list that I have, I personally can live with it very well. I'm very happy the way it turned out and that I could put numbers behind it. Thank you for watching this video. I know it was a long one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more of these, I publish um, top 10 once a week. Please subscribe to my channel and I will talk to you soon.